beginners take part in any part of the trail? Absolutely. So the way this trail is designed is you start in the northern Cedarburg and you're really starting in a Cape Nature Reserve, wilderness area, walking on beautiful tracks, then beautiful paths, you know, so it's a really gradual experience into the hiking itself. So by the time you've got to the end of stage one, which mm -hmm. is the Greater Cedarburg Traverse, you're pretty, you're pretty good as a beginner. You, you, get, you know what it's about. You, you got your walking legs with you. That sounds, I, I don't know, I'm a beginner and it sounds a little bit overwhelming for me. Nah, you just need to come on a weekend trail and, okay, and you'll, you'll, get, it, you'll get it all figured out. Yeah. <laughs> now where does it start and where does it end? We start at Paques Pass mm -hmm. in the, in the Cedarburg and um, you know those 56 days take you through the most unbelievable landscape. And when you look at some of, the, uh, some of the footage and images we've got and you looked at them and I said, well this is in the Western Cape Mountains, you're like, nah, that's more like the Drakensberg guys. Really? So there's gems out there that a lot of us aren't aware of, and especially on the private land. You know, you get to waterfalls and rock pools and incredible rock formations that we just don't see otherwise. Um, so we continue from there down through to Ceres. The trail crosses over the Hex River Mountains and the Hex River Valley, which is a spectacular section as well. And then onto the Langeberg, where we just walk and walk and walk along that Langeberg ridge line until we get to just outside George in the Otaniqua Mountains. Now, what advice do you have for someone who wants to walk a part of the trail but has never done it before? What should they bring and what should they be wary of? Well, there's not much to be wary of other than do a little bit of training. Mm -hmm. We often encourage that, especially with, with your boots you know, and your shoes. Like, Get them on, walk them, try them out. Um, we've been sponsored by High Tech this year, which is great to have such an incredible brand with us. And you know, we, we're running weekend programs where it's like, well, We'll show you the kit you need. These are the mm -hmm. boots you need. This is the kind of way you set up your tent. And we find there are a lot of folk out there who are a little unsure about camping wild. And so the Rim of Africa is an opportunity to really get a taste for that. Is it for me? Is it not for me? And if it is for you, you've got a long way to go. Should we be wary of animals? You know, we walk past and often see tracks of leopard, caracal. Um, in fact, this weekend, it was bizarre. Um, my colleague who was walking just in front of me, like sort of stopped and said, what is this? and he realized he was standing in a fresh kill of a rabbit by a leopard. Oh my gosh. So there, were, there was, the blood hadn't even dried on the bones, the fur was all over the place, and it was just like, ah. But we're not worried about leopards. I mean, the Cape leopards are, are very secretive animals. Yeah. Uh, we come across a few snakes here and there, mm -hmm. but very beautiful snakes, especially the adders. Um, and otherwise, mountain rebok, lots of buck. Um, yeah. So nothing to be too afraid of. There's nothing you need to be afraid Just of. Maybe don't step on a snake. Don't step on a snake. Just watch where you're going. Watch where you're going and watch out for the weather. I mean, this is the big mm -hmm. thing that I think in South Africa we underestimate. You know, when you get into mountains, you're in mountain terrain. And mountains are formidable places. The weather can change quickly. And when it does, that can be life-threatening. Mm -hmm. So the dangers are not really animals or rocks or where you are. It's more watching for the weather and being within your, within your comfort zone. Yeah. Now, I know that it's been named, um, it's been recognized as SA's first friendship trail. Yeah. What's a friendship trail? Well, friendship trails are very similar to like twin towns. They use them in the tourism industry. Mm -hmm. And the friendship trail uh, program was developed by a, a trail in Korea called the Jejuale Trail. And it's a great concept where trails from around the world tie up and create friendship with other trails. So last year we launched the friendship trail with the Rim of Africa and the Bruce Trail in Canada. And we had a whole host of Canadians come out and they walked the first few days and they loved it. And what was interesting was the Rim of Africa as a, a mountains and trails initiative is very similar to the Bruce Trail in Canada with what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, so although we have very different cultures and very different hiking cultures, uh, there's an opportunity now with the Friendship Trail to share ideas, to share resources on some levels around funding opportunities and especially for hikers. So you can walk the first section of the Rim of Africa now and you'll see a little sign there that introduces you to the International Friendship Trail program and you'll see where the Bruce Trail is and you can say, oh, well, hey, maybe I'll go and walk the Bruce Trail one day. And it's the same in Canada. People on the Bruce Trail, which gets large numbers of m Canadian hikers, will come across a section which is the Rim of Africa section on the Bruce Trail. And they can see our sign there and read about Rim of Africa and say, hey, maybe we should go down to the Western Cape and take a hike. That's incredible. Yeah, it's cool. Now, if I want to start um, walking the rim, rim of Africa now, how do I get started? Who do I contact? Where so do the I go? the best thing to do is you just go to our website, which is www.rimofafrica.org, and um, everything's on the site. But the main thing is you can 
check out which section you'd like to do. So there's certain sections that are predefined on predefined dates. You can also walk certain sections on your own. And a lot of the Rim of Africa is actually a guided experience. So you're getting that extra benefit of knowledge from the guides, their expertise in the mountains. We do catered hikes as well, which some people prefer. You don't have to stress about your food. And you can just sort of pick and choose what you would like and what works for your budget or for your sort of hiking style. Um, and the main thing that we do is we then, once you sign up and register online, we send you a preparation guide, which is about a 45-page booklet, which has just got everything. What tents you, you might need, what gear you need to pack, how to walk in the mountains. Oh, that's a very important How to guide. train, that's like a six-week training mm -hmm. program. It's, yeah. Galia, yeah, thank you very much for coming in and sharing. I look forward to trying one of the trails out this summer. Oh, I'm going to hold you to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.